If you use Webflow to collect information from customers using Webflow Forms and want to bring that information into Notion, then this is the tutorial for you. In this video, we're exploring how to collect information from a form on your beautiful website built in Webflow and add that information to a new database row in Notion. Why is that helpful? Maybe your customers are signing up for coaching, online courses, or just want to find out more about your products and services. This integration will allow your team to collect that information from that customer so that you can track where they are in a sales process and follow up with any resources or documents that you want to send them. There's probably a bunch of other use cases. After watching, comment below with how you're planning to use Webflow and Notion. Behold my wonderful Webflow website that I made for the purposes of this tutorial. What I'm going to need here is some information that's already been submitted via a form. If I go to contact and then go to this page, I can see the form which I'll be using and wanting to collect information from my user. I want information from this form to go over to this database in Notion. To get things started, I actually want to see if I have information in this form. In projects, I can select settings, forms, and then scrolling to the bottom, I can see that I submitted something here a while back. To get this party started, I'm going to explain to you why I designed the table in Notion this way as it relates to this contact form. This contact form has three fields, the name, the email address, and the message that this person is sending us. In Notion, I have the name, the email, but no message column. You can have a separate message column, but one of the powerful things about Notion is that when you create new rows in a database, new row, it's actually a page. So inside this page, I can fill this with all the information that I want coming off of this contact form, which is the message. Apart from those three fields, there are some other things in here which I've set up, which is a status property. This is a single select property type, and basically I filled it with a few stages. One is a new lead, the second is contacted, and the third being closed. You can customize this for whatever your team's sales process or onboarding looks like. Next, I have a text field, which is telling me when this was submitted, and this is information that I'll be pulling off of Webflow so that we know when this new row came in. And then the final property I have is a person column, which allows me to assign this new entry to one of my team members. So far, it's just me. To kick things off, we need to get things set up in Notion. So go to settings and members, integrations, and then develop your own integrations. This will open up a new web page, and here you want to create this new integration and name it something meaningful. This is Webflow form to Notion. If you're creating lots of integrations, you can add logos so you can differentiate between them in the future. And then make sure you have the right workspace associated with this integration and hit submit. This will generate an internal integration token. I'm going to need this later, so keep this page open. But for now, hit save changes. Go back to Notion, and we want to make sure that this integration can access the relevant database. To do that, we need to open this database as a page. Hit that button there. And giving access to the integration is much like sharing this page with a friend or a coworker. I want to hit share and select invite, and then invite, select the integration that I just made earlier. Great, now everything is set up in Notion. Let's move over to Zapier. In Zapier, I want to create a new Zap. Let's give it a meaningful name, Webflow contact form to Notion, and select the trigger to be Webflow. The trigger event is a new form submission, hit continue, and then I'll need to sign in with my Webflow account. Here it's going to ask me for which site I want to integrate with and also specifically what form I need. Here I'm going to select the Zapier Notion demo site that I showed you earlier. And the form is the only form that I have called email form one. Hit continue. Now we know which form we're taking information off of. We're going to test the trigger and this should pull information from Webflow. And as you can see, it's our dummy data here with a fake email and also some message. Hit continue. The next action is going to be sending this to Notion. So type Notion. 
and the action event is to create a new database item for our team. Let's hit continue. Hit sign into Notion and you'll get a little pop-up. This is going to ask you for that internal integration token that we created in a previous step. If you go back to my integrations and hit show and copy, head back to that pop-up and then paste it in that box, we can proceed. Now the pop-up's gone, go back to Zapier and hit continue. Now I need to select what database specifically I want to send information to. Here I can see the Webflow form submission database. The name will mimic the one that you use in Notion, which is Webflow form submissions. If you don't see that in Zapier, it means that you've forgotten to share the table with the integration bot. To do that again, go back to Notion, open this database as a page and share it with the bot. Back in Zapier, we are now pointing to the right database. And now I need to populate the database with the right information coming from Webflow. If I click in name, I can show all of the options that are coming off of Webflow. And I want to select the property here, name two. The next field I want to fill with the email. Here I can see that. And then this is also pulling the other fields off of Notion and asking me what I want to fill those in when stuff comes off of Webflow. I'm going to choose the person this is assigned to, which is me, but you could pick whoever you want on your team, multiple people, if that's your jam. And then in this field, the submitted at, I'm going to take some more information off of Webflow. If I click show all options, I'll select this, the submitted at property. This lets my team know when this was submitted so we can follow up as quickly as possible. In the status, I want to select new lead because this is fresh off the website. And in the content of that Notion page, I want to select the message which that person sent via the contact form. Here we can see the data message, select that, and we're good to go. Hit continue. Here we're going to test the action and it looks like we're ready to go. So let's hit test and continue. A database item was sent to Notion just now. Let's see if that's true. Back in Notion, it looks like everything's working. We have a new form submission with the name of the person who submitted in Webflow. This fake email here is being put into the email field. The status is sent to new lead. I can see when it was submitted, who's assigned to it. And if I go into this page by clicking open, then I can see the message. To finish things up, let's go back to Zapier, scroll down the page and hit turn on Zap. Now the Zap is on, you can see that this toggle has changed to green. And now let's go back to my Zaps. Now I can rest assured that this integration is working and my team can make someone's day just a little bit happier when they reach out to us. And that's how you collect information from Webflow's forms and bring it into Notion using Zapier. If you have any questions about this integration, then comment below and one of the lovely team at Zapier will be right with you. If you want to reach out to me about how to get the most out of Notion, then you can reach out via educreator.com. That's edu-creator.com. Or visit my YouTube channel by searching for Surge Hunt and checking out some of my Notion tutorials. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit the like button below. And if you're new to this channel and like content like this, then consider hitting the subscribe button if you haven't already. Thanks for watching.